Coach Robbins, good to see you. How you doing? Doing well. Looking forward to the big game tomorrow night. Yes, sir. You look like you may have played a little football back in your day. Uh, I did. Actually, I'm an alumni from Andrews. Really? I graduated from Andrews in 03. Man. And I played at Davidson College. You went down and got some uh, academics to go along with your athletics. Oh, yes. And, uh, a little known fact about Davidson is if you go there to play sports, you also have to apply along with general admissions. So there's no slots put aside just for athletes there. You have to earn your way into the school. No special uh, exceptions in at all for the athletes. They uh, they stay on top of you. Their four-year graduation rate is one of the highest in the country. So. What do you teach at Andrews? Uh, social studies. Uh, I teach AP government, world history, civics. I run the gambit with the kids. And uh, what grades? Does that cover 9 through 12, all grades? This semester, I've taught all grades. This semester, I have 9, 11, and 12. Good deal. How about these football players? Any of the football players in your classes? Oh, yeah. Um, they actually try to avoid my classes sometimes because they know I'm sometimes tougher on those guys than on uh, the other students because I have very high expectations of my kids. Not going to be any free passes over there then? Oh, no. They, they definitely have to earn their meal ticket. And uh, the guys that have been in your classes, they have had some success? Yes. Um, we have... Um, right now we have two athletes in my AP government class. Last year I average about two football players in my AP government class a year and they do very well. Um, actually last two years ago I had one of the highest scores in the class on the AP exam coming from one of my football players. Not so. bad, not bad. Well, who was that young man? Lyle Davis. And were you there when Tony Washington was there? I was there, yes, I was there in the beginning. Um, my first year at Andrews as a coach was with Coach McCoy his first year. Uh, I was there that first year with him and helped him get things going and then I actually left the country for two years. Where'd you go? I was in Italy uh, earning my master's degree. So, so you got your education abroad then? Yes. Studied, studied abroad as I spent used to say. two years in Rome, Italy. Wow. Now you're getting your master's there. Was that in uh, the, the government, political science and history? Government, politics and uh, focusing on international law and international relations. That should look good on the resume one day I would think. It does. Um, I, but where I'm at now I really enjoy working with these kids. I actually, coming back from Italy. The first person I talked to when I got back to High Point was Coach McCoy, and if it wouldn't have been for coaching, I probably would have never gotten into teaching. It was working with the kids and developing them and watching them be successful that really put me into the classroom. Coach John Robbins with us uh, along the offensive line with the High Point Andrews Red Raiders. How did you and Coach McCoy get connected? Um, actually, by pure randomness. I walked into the building on his second day as the head coach there, and I just said, you know, I'm an alumni, I'm back in town. I just graduated. I'm looking for something to do. Can I help out around? And so you didn't have a teaching job at that time? I did not have a teaching job. That was fresh out of college. I was yeah. back in High Point and looking for work. And I was going back to the school to work with the kids in the meantime. Wow. And then you and Coach McCoy got together and then uh, went right in that offensive line work. Um, I was working. I was actually an assistant to the offensive line coach at that time. Um, Ryan Austin was the offensive line coach then. But I worked closely with Coach McCoy. I count him as one of my real good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten real close over the past couple of years and I've grown a lot working with him as a head coach. Now you came out of uh, High Point back in the day, so you played for the Red Raiders back in the day. Yes sir. Dave Mizell was my head coach. Yeah, he was a good coach. He was. Uh, we actually had a really good team. My, we're the best, we joke around, we're the best 0-15 team. You guys had it taken away, state. didn't you? Yes sir. We that had... was all about the, the room with the documents and the paperwork and all that stuff, right? Well the, what had our, the the four fists that we had uh, placed upon us were from acad or not academic, excuse me, uh, attendance eligibility. Yeah. I think that was pretty much system wide. They had, I know, other schools had the same problem. Sweeping well. wide, yes. Yeah, and uh, we were 13 and two. Uh, went out in the, I believe, regional finals uh, against Reedsville in the snow on a Sunday. Wow, in the 2002. Sunday game. Yeah, played against Jerome Simpson that game. Wow, Jerome Simpson, the guy did the flip in NFL and the rest is history. Actually, he haunted me all through college as well. I went to Davidson and he went to Coastal, Coastal Carolina. Carolina. Right, right. And Coastal Carolina beat Davidson the same way Reedsville did, throwing jump balls to Jerome in the corner. And again, take us back to that game against Reedsville. That was on a Sunday. It was a Sunday that because is we had rare a massive because snowstorm. They don't, the NCHSAA does not like to play Sunday games. How did all that come about? Uh, that was the year that we had a lot of the snowstorms. Um, pretty much everything was iced over. When we went to the game, they did the best they could to dry out the field, but they still had snow bluffs that were sometimes bigger than me on the side, just from where they were plowing the field. And that was at Reedsville? Or? That was at Reedsville. Wow. 
A lot of snow in Reidsville back in that day, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow, wow. That was probably early December or late November? That was, I want to say, the first week of December. Wow. because Maybe guys, the last week of November. At the old 13-2, and two, you guys were very close to that state championship. That was a championship game in, the, in probably the West or East region to get to the title game, It right? was. Uh, the next, I believe the next round was the state championship. You guys are that close. And same thing, our only loss during the regular season was to Central. Wow. We lost in a two-point conversion. You remember what? Oh, two, I was going to ask what the score was. Twenty-seven to seven this year, but you lost by two points. Oh, I then. still remember. We went for an op. Coach uh, came over, said we're going to run the option behind my side. Uh, we ran the option, didn't quite make it, and then Central recovered. I think they may have gotten one more score after that on the last drive. So, so you played for a heck of a coach, Dave Mizell, whose uh, dad, I think it was, is Vinegar Ben Mizell, Wilmer Mizell, mm -hmm. who came through uh, baseball and went into politics. I believe he got in the politics County. as well. Yeah, sure did. And, David Mazel, he coached him at Rags before he came to Andrews. He's had a great background and just outstanding coach. He um after after Andrews, I know a lot of the staff went over to Glen High School. With Coach Dickey Klein. And we're there. And then now you know Coach Payne is the head coach there and has been uh, having some success there at Glen. And I get to talk to him every once in a while. We scrimmaged there this past season. And Charlie Metcalf was the offensive coordinator back then, and he's up in Asheville now. That was a great staff back in the day. That it was. Um, when I look at the staff we have now and the staff then, we I see a lot of the same. We're very organized. We're very disciplined and focused in terms of planning practice out. And we never would wing anything. Uh, that's the first thing Coach McCoy came in and said in the staff meeting, that if we don't practice it, we don't run it. Uh, and we're not going to be drawing in the dirt on the sidelines. So. You know, you had two of your linemen here tonight, uh, Wright and Pierce and Jerry. and Jerry Davis. Talk about what those two men mean to that offensive line because you've had a chance to kind of mentor those guys and bring them through. Jerry and, Day, uh, Jerry and Brighton are the anchors of the offensive line this year. Those guys, we actually have a relatively small offensive line. Um, with the exception of one of our tackles who's over 300. This is one of the lighter offensive lines we've had in a couple of years. I think if you remember two years ago, we had one of the biggest offensive lines in the state. Um, but one thing I can say about these guys is there's two things that makes them better than everybody they've played so far is the fact that they're scrappy as you can find. They will bite your ankles off if they have to. And their football IQ is very high. Uh, I've been able to do a lot of advanced techniques with these guys, a lot of advanced pass protection. Uh, they've been doing dual reading which is sometimes very hard for high school athletes to do, uh, especially as fast as the game can get played sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but they are, their football IQ is very high and they're in, incredibly competitive. And I guess they hold their blocks for the longest amount of time too, right? They can hold those blocks. Oh yeah, we tell them we block till the echo of the whistle. That's a good call, Coach, because I like that too, because we used to always tell these kids, play until you hear the whistle blows, and then if you hear it blow the second time, you know it's time to get ready to get stopped. Yeah, that's great. Well, we, um, I always I pull them aside and chew them out if I ever see them looking back for the football. They know uh, one of the proudest moments I have during the games is when I see my offensive lineman downfield 40 yards running with uh, Marquell on the jet sweeps yeah. trying to block from the backside. You still see those offensive linemen downfield blocking the wide, uh, blocking the defensive backs up there. In the, you know, you get downfield with a nice run, blocking those DBs. You get offensive linemen blocking a DB. You, you know your guys. Oh, yeah. well, the they, job. they start to lick their chops a little bit. We joke about it when they go after the salad eaters. Mm -hmm. um, but we like to get into the second and third level. Um, that's one of the reasons why they're effective is they're so quick off of the line, especially between our guard and center, that they can sometimes get to the second level before the linebackers have a chance to scrape. What was your play and weight back in the day? Coach John Robbins with us with the High Point Andrews Red Raiders football in focus. Shane's Rib Shack for a Thursday night big game tomorrow night. The Raiders take on North Brunswick facing the Scorpions in round two of the playoffs. What was your play and weight back in the day? I, well, I was under three, I was under 275 actually uh, because I wrestled also on the heavyweight limit back then was 275. So I left my winter season of 275, about, probably about 270, and then weighed in my first year at Davidson at about 290. So going back to the wrestling, did you have success at that level too, I guess? Uh, I wasn't as well, I wasn't as good of a wrestler as I was a football player, but wrestling definitely helped mold me into a better football player. So it's something tougher. I encourage with my yeah. guys and to do track as well. Got you do any wrestling coaching now or just football? I, I'm actually the head track coach. So. Head track coach? Yes, sir. My lord! <laughs> 
And how much do you weigh now? Uh, right now, my doctor will tell you I'm 420. You're kidding me. Yes, sir. Wow, you carry the weight well. I try to. <laughs> he says you're 420. 420 pounds, yeah. I'm working on getting that down. I'm a little man. bit more than I need to be right now. One thing, I would, man, you can play offensive line for my team today. Well, when you stack at six foot five, it hides pretty well. Yeah, that's a good shot. Yeah. I'll tell you what. So you're going to try to lose a few, I'm sure, down the road, too. You need to. Um, wow. Playing days are over. I don't need the weight anymore. So. so you would not be probably uh, demonstrating for the 100-meter, 200-meter guys. No, I, I work with the throwers primarily. I have uh, excellent assistant coaches. Actually, two football coaches that primarily work with our sprinters. I bet you guys have a good track team. I would think you would. We do. We uh, won the Boys and Girls Conference last year. Um, our girls were second place in the state, actually, in 2A. And we had a first place. Uh, we had a state champion 400-meter runner, uh, Mari Devon. Number, he's actually number 12. He plays uh, DB and wide receiver for us. A lot of speed on the outside. Yeah. Coach John Robbins with us. What do you need to do to beat North Brunswick? What do you know about them? What do you need to beat these Scorpions? Um, they're a very athletic team. Looking at them, I, I've watched primarily the defense. You know, I'm an offensive coach, and I spend almost all of my time game planning with the offense and special teams, so, or with the defense and special teams. So I don't watch much of the offense. Uh, defensively, they've got some great athletes on the first and second level. Um, Secondary, I think Lamar is going to try and open up the box and keep them from trying to pile everybody in there and stop the run. Uh, I know on offense, they run, I believe they run a spread offense, maybe a little bit of pistol and some offset eye pistol. Uh, but we've got to keep an eye on the quarterback to make sure he doesn't pull out of the pocket with the ball. So. And you feel confident about this game going in? You guys got a good game plan? You feel confident about uh, taking we're, them out? We're very confident. Uh, talking with Coach McCoy last year, we were discussing it. Last year we came in as a number one seed, and we could see that the kids were a little unsure about how to handle that. Um, this year, Coach McCoy mentioned it. He said, we're number one seed, and our kids feel and act like they're a number one seed. They're much more calm. They have a better swagger about themselves, and they know how to stay disciplined and focus and respect everybody that we're going to play and take everything. Serious. You know, I was looking at the guys a little bit early about this uh, number 16 seed Parkwood to beat number one Franklin in the 2 AA West. Well, that was just wild last week. That happened. That's the wonderful thing about playoffs is everybody gets a shot at it. Um, I'm not a big fan of the BCS system. But I, li I like the playoff system, and I'm, I think that's one of the wonderful things is on any given night, you know, once the playoffs start, it's survive in advance. Coach John Robbins with us. Hop one Andrews Red Raiders, offensive line coach. Is it a goal, one of your goals, to be the head coach one day of some school? Um, head coach one day, is that kind of down the road? That would be nice. I'm very happy where I'm at now. Oh, yeah. I'm growing as a coach underneath Coach McCoy, and I love – I really wouldn't have considered coaching anywhere except for Andrews when I first came out. So I'm I'm in love with teaching and coaching where I'm at. And that's your old house where you came out of Andrews. What year again? I graduated in 2003. 2003. Went so to, the 02 season was my last year. You went to Davidson and graduated. Davidson College graduated in the 07. So you haven't been out of college all that long, then? Nope. Wow. You really enjoying it these days too? Uh, yeah. I. It's. It's something special to go back into the building and be from the other perspective. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think I'm getting some karma for the knucklehead shenanigans I got into as a student. But we have some really great kids. We have some very intelligent kids. And there's a lot of hidden treasures in Andrews that sometimes people don't hear about. I think the best thing you got to do, you've got to try to bring out the best both athletically and academically among all those students. We have, bring out the best. We have a very strong academic program. We offer, we offer I want to say, more AP programs and some other Guilford County High School classes, uh, Guilford County High Schools. And we have very strong students that are coming out. Um, we've had students who are competitive. Try Last year, one of my AP government students was competing to get into the Air Force Academy. Um, so we have high caliber students coming out of Andrews. And I emphasize that with my kids. And, you know, I give them a hard time. But they're a student athlete. And the student comes first. And we emphasize that at Andrews. I'll tell you, it's uh, located a nice spot. Went there this week on Tuesday for Amani Watkins' son. He went Binghamton. Uh, New York, the university there, and uh, came down to uh, Jamestown, all past Ragsdale. Just come on through, make that right on McGuinn Street. You know, it's Lexington beautiful Avenue. this time of year yeah, with the leaves nice. falling. And nice. uh, Monty, she's she's a very intelligent young lady. She was actually recruited by Davidson uh, oh, wow. a little bit earlier on. So um, she's going to be successful wherever she goes. Checking a few final numbers here. Well, Coach. Again, the bottom line, you got this uh, Scorpion team tomorrow night. What do you got to do to make sure this is not a Reedsville slash 13-2 season under Coach Mizell? Make sure you guys get this done and go all the way. Um, we 
have been extremely focused. I think uh, that first game of the year coming out against Central, we were very nervous. Uh, the kids weren't sure how to respond sometimes to adversity. And sometimes when you get into a fist fight, a little punch in the nose wakes you up. And I think after that first loss at, uh, against Central, they doubled down, they focused, they said, guys, we need to take care of business one step at a time. Um, and we, the only team we're concerned about is the team we're playing that week. So from I've told a few people over the years, it doesn't sound good, but some people hear this, sometimes a loss has a tendency to do some guys good. You never want to lose the Central. Uh, that's the one, as an alumni, uh, it stings every time that happens. Um, so And it feels great when we beat them. Um, but if you're going to take a loss, you want to take it early in the season. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a loss will humble you and make you focus a little bit better on what needs to be taken care of. It's uh, not necessarily part of the overall scheme of things, but is it a good thing, maybe in some ways, that Reedsville's 2A and uh, Carver, they're 2A, and you guys are 2 double A. Would have been better to get all those guys together? Um, a lot of football fans probably wouldn't like that. Uh, we had, I think it's great that they got rid of the pod system, so you yeah. eliminate some of those first round mashups. But I know our kids, they're scrappy. They will play anybody. We'll play in a parking lot if we need to. Doesn't matter if it's east or west. It's just who's going to be the best. Uh, yep. You gotta. If you want to be the best, you gotta beat the best. So we'll play whoever, anywhere, and put it all on the table. Coach John Robbins has been with us from High Point Andrews with the Red Raiders. Coach, some final thoughts about uh, Coach McCoy and your overall staff, how you guys work so well together. What does that, what, how do you guys come together and get the job done like you do? Um, we have a variety of personality on staff, and I think this season, out of the past six years um, that Coach McCoy has been there, this is the most cohesive staff we've had. Um, every once, over the past couple of years, we've had some disagreements, we've had some personalities that didn't quite mesh, but this staff has really come together as a family. Uh, we joke, we laugh, we have a good time with each other and you know we get heated sometimes and we like to compete especially in practice offense there's a whole lot defense. more going on about that coaching staff sometimes behind the scenes and people realize that oh yeah and uh it's it's, it takes a lot more than just showing up on game day to be a coach. It's real easy to go out and call plays. It's real hard to get the kids prepared to execute them. And a lot of people don't realize the effort and the time and the hours uh, outside of practice that goes into it's being It's probably tougher breaking coach. down that film and then being able to uh, communicate that to the players or mistakes, what they need to improve upon. People realize, too. Oh, we grade our players every week. Um, all Every position, every player gets a grade. And we hold them to a very high standard on what's acceptable and not acceptable. Coming out of Davidson, uh, what did you take for the rest of the way down the life road with you coming out of Davidson? That had to be a heck of an experience to be able to say, that's like coming out of Duke, coming out of Stanford, that's on the same level. It Davidson was. Um, I just say Davidson is the, or Harvard is the Davidson of the North. So it, it was very humbling coming out of Davidson. Um, it definitely made me focus on my academics. I High school is very easy sometimes, and it was good for me to go to a school where I was challenged. That's a huge challenge here, too. Yeah, so it, it humbled me, it made me appreciate it, and it made me really appreciate education and learning. Did you have a good mentor coming up, growing up, somebody that kind of steered you in the right direction? I did, actually. Um, actually, on the coaching staff, probably the coach I was closest with was um, also the wrestling coach, Ron Crawford. I believe he's the AD at Southern he's Guilford He's Southern Guilford, Coach Crawford. Yeah. So you were tied up with He's a good, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. He's, yeah. he's another scrappy little guy. He's kind of an unassuming scrappy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We would we would joke yeah. on each other. I would try to prank him in class, and he would take it, uh, and then he'd pick on me back. But we had a really good relationship, and um, yeah, he did a good job. And then going into Davidson, I had a very strong uh, professor who mentored me while I was there. So. And family background, everybody's still in the high point today? Yes, uh, mother and father. Actually, dad's from New York, mom's from Florida. They met in the middle in Charleston. So. <laughs> That's a good start. Um, my immediate family is here in high point, and the coaching staff is also very close. Are they pretty so. diverse to the coaching staff from all different locations? Oh, yeah, we've got a uh, Coach Barry, the defensive coordinator, is from up north. He's from Ohio. He played at Youngstown State. Oh, man, that's a heck of a um, place there. Wow. Kelly Clark, our offensive coordinator, he's... Uh, I mean, Youngstown State, that's Trussell, isn't it? Jim Trussell's old stomping ground. He was. He was yeah. there when Jim Trussell was Jim there. Trussell, Trussell was yeah. his coach. So I get to hear at least one Trussell story a week from uh, Coach Barry. Uh, we've got a former Winston... We've got a lot of Rams on the staff. Uh, we've got uh, an 
We've got an Aggie. We've got a NC Central. Uh, everybody on staff has played football at the college level. So they, we have a very knowledgeable staff and a very experienced staff, and we try our best to try and share that with the kids. We'll share this with them here. I know the guys said they try to stay out of the media as much as they can, try to get away from that. We've got it here at uh, GreensboroSports.com, also going to be on YouTube as well. So share that with the people when you get back to Andrews tomorrow. Coach, great to talk to you. Thanks. For Thank you very much over. for having Thanks us Thanks for bringing the kids over too. Not a problem. Anything we can do to showcase our athletes they they work really hard and they deserve to be showcased for all of their work keep up the good work thank you avoid those uh, reasonable snow drifts oh, oh. one game at a time and we'll make our way to the championship you got it coach thanks again thank you keep up the good work take care again coach john robbins with us offensive line coach high point andrews red raiders it's a big man with a big plan he's got the big band to take the guys